Hello. Hey, 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 Anna, we're back. I know, it's like I haven't seen you for so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a whole two weeks. I mean, it's been an eventful two weeks, really, hasn't it? Because, like, Christmas yeah. happened. To be honest, it feels like a lot longer, so. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, like, I probably didn't speak to you for months before the last time we did this. And if you're watching this, you're like, what are they chatting about? Um, we did a part <laughs> one to this two weeks ago. Is that right? I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I put it in the in the description for this anyway. So you can go you can go and watch it there. Um, but yeah, so we did this two weeks ago. And then before that, we hadn't spoken to each other for like a couple of months, probably. Um, so, yeah. So. It was two weeks ago and then we were like we've got so many things that we want to talk about so <laughs> let's uh let's do this again indeed um so what are we talking about today then anna uh frugal living tips uh so we kicked off last time um talking about our sort of favorite top frugal living tips and mm. we got so into the conversation uh, the youtube live was very very long so yeah. we decided to make a part two sort of on the spots uh so we're gonna sort of try whittle through them uh, today to go through all of our tips. Um, I think last time we sort of went really in depth into a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, a lot of people said they found it really useful. So hopefully this will, this will also really help. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the kind of, you contacted me about doing this. I think we've kind of been talking for a while about mm. doing something like this. And we've done things like this in, in the past. Um, but I think the timing of this is because yeah. we've just off the back of Christmas, which is always an expensive time. And we're right at the tail end of what has been a crappy year for most people's finances in terms of the whole cost of living shenanigans and everything's just expensive. Um, so... Yeah, we got loads and loads of frugal living things to get through. And I know I've got loads of frugal living videos on my, you know, my channel and they do really well. So um, hopefully there'll be something new in this, something you can take away. Um, and yeah, so I have, I have prior to this, I wrote a massive list that I sent it to you. <laughs> it was literally like, I went through like my website, I went through uh, my channel and just kind of like, I guess copied and pasted and lifted out all the tips that I had everywhere. So um, some of these we have done before, um, but we'll kind of just touch on a few. And I thought we could start with food. So Anna, do you want to kick off with some <laughs> food-based frugal living tips? Well, I think for me, um, I used to spend a lot on food. It was probably my worst thing that I used to spend on. It was takeaways. It was, uh, you know, just not really, not really worrying too much about it. And then when I started to think about budgeting and saving money, I was like, how am I spending this much on food? It's just mm. ridiculous. Um, and to be honest, the thing that helped me the most was actually a food inventory. Um, mm. And I've spoken about this uh, before on my channel. Um, and it was something I think that not many people think of, I think, because a lot of people, when they think about food and frugal and saving money, they often think about, oh, let's buy discounted and all of these things that I think people might forget, but are common knowledge. But I think food inventory is something that perhaps isn't as common. Um, and I kid you not, I had a spreadsheet um, <laughs> where I was keeping track. Right, you're in good company. company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very sad uh, but I do love a good spreadsheet mm. um, but yeah I, I really think that food inventory uh, mm. really helps because so many times you go to the shops and you end up buying something uh, because you see it and you're like oh I quite fancy that oh I might need that or oh it's an offer or something yeah. and then you come home and you're like oh crap I've got five of these already and I didn't realize um, <laughs> yeah. so a good example forget. of this for me was um we spent a couple of days over Christmas at my parents' house and we had like, we'd booked a click and collect for yesterday when we were getting home. And um, because we'd been out of the house for three days, we had like no idea what was in the house. <laughs> so we were just like, oh yeah, let's get this. Oh, have we got milk? I don't know if we've got milk, let's get some milk. And we just came home and we had like so much of everything because we just hadn't bothered to look at what we already had. So. I think that's just keeping a record of what you have. And another tip that's going to, I'm just going to jump in off the back of that is shop 
you, you know, shop your cupboards, like plan your meals around what you already have. So a great thing to do when you're, you know, your meal planning, and there's another tip for you, is you know, plan out your meals, is to is to actually go, right, what have I already got in the cupboards? Um, a lot of times when I do this, I find that I've already got, you know, maybe two or three meals that I could make, or maybe then another, you know, two or three that I could put together if I just got, you know, like a tin of chopped tomatoes or something like that, you know, like, and there's one or two ingredients missing. So being really clear on what you have and then planning your meals around those things is really good. Um, and then leading on from that, <laughs> sorry, I'm on a bit of a roll now. Like, no, no, go for it. Um, is I then like to look for what food is actually cheap. So I think often we we plan our meals and we'll go, you know, like, oh, you know what, I want lasagna or something like that. And then we'll we'll go and we'll look for, you know, the, the cheapest, you know, lasagna sheets or, you know, like the cheapest this. Instead, I like to go, well, why don't we look for the meals that are cheapest and then buy those ingredients instead and um, so it could be that you're going into the shops and um you know and you could because if we can you know, shop online i'll do most of my like okay all my food delivered um i i will go online and i'll go oh actually you know like the chickens on offer at the moment so what can i make out of chicken and, and do it that way around rather than going you know like, what do i fancy because it's going to change in like three or four days <laughs> especially if you've got a list of what you already have you can be exactly. like what can i make with chicken and the tin tomatoes and this that yeah. I have. <laughs> it's like an old TV program, isn't it? What was that? Like, can't cook, won't cook or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> just bring in like random ingredients and see what they can make. Um, but yeah, and you, it's a bit like, um, it can be a bit of a challenge when you first do this because you're like, not used to, you used to just go, I'll buy that, I'll buy this. Um, but actually, if you if you sort of think ahead and you you're, you're planning around what's cheap and what you've already got it's really useful um so yeah i would say definitely do those things <laughs> anything else on the food front um i think shopping around for prices in terms of i think we touched last time on price per kilo and things like that which mm -hmm. is also really important um, but also sort of shopping around for what different supermarkets have at the time um obviously this like don't do this if you have to drive far away yeah. from one shop to another to look because then you're wasting money on petrol um but quite often you'll have a few different shops within walking distance mm -hmm. um, and i know someone who does this at the moment is she will go and she will look and be like okay well pasta here is this much and this this much here and you know what i learned when i was doing my accountancy training was uh it fascinated me and i mean it makes sense but actually apparently the different supermarkets sort of change what they have like on lower prices at different times so it's almost like it was something around like you know one week they will have an offer on pasta to like get you in and then make you buy the more expensive stuff um they don't really expect people to go okay well they've got pasta on offer and they've got i don't know potatoes on offer yeah. i'm gonna go to two different places mm. they expect okay we'll draw them in with this they'll come to buy the cheap pasta mm. and then they'll do their rest of their everything shopping, else is more expensive full price. yeah, yeah. Um, oh that's really clever it's interesting what you say though about um and i think on my my master list of frugal living tips i had like choose your supermarket carefully and um, but i was thinking about this like on my way home from work like i pass uh a sainsbury's a tesco and a little so actually none of those it like i would not be going out of my way if i nipped into the you know say no for pasta <laughs> and then you know just go for this and little for that and actually one of the things that put me off shopping in some of these like cheaper supermarkets like lidl and, and, and aldi was they had a terrible gluten-free range um you know like i couldn't rely on them having the you know the bread or the pasta occasionally it showed up in the middle but, you know, the mid, those amazing middle aisles. Um, so I used to find that I would end up going to two shops and that just wouldn't work out. But now, like, I've got, there's a little that's just down the road and there's a Tesco down there. I can do both. So, yeah. you know, I've really got no excuses anymore for not following my own advice on that one. And food waste. I think we have to touch on food waste. Yes, good one. Because... I just can't believe how much of it goes around still and yep. how much of it happens with people who complain about money. Um, yes. And 
I'm bad at this as well. Don't get mm. me wrong. Like I am aware of it and I'm still <laughs> quite bad at it. Um, but I think sometimes people just don't realize how much food waste happens. And through planning, basically through better planning and better utilizing of, you know, leftovers and ingredients of like you know there are mm -hmm. so many meals that you can make with leftovers so I used to make uh, some sort of version of chickpea curry like mm -hmm. in with different vegetables and different whatever and you can have it with pasta and rice and potatoes and whatever else um, just having like leftover meals and things like that mm -hmm. and especially if you live on your own or just yes. with two people like it's easier when you have kids and big families we don't really get leftovers in this house <laughs> yeah <laughs> whereas you know when I sort of cook for one person um you know it's quite like difficult most things come in like two people size portions minimum don't they minimum yeah mm. um but actually I got pretty good when I was going through my getting out of debt phase and things like that mm. I got really good at freezing stuff because I just knew that I'm the kind of person that gets bored of food. Mm. Like if I have it two days in a row, I will not have it again. Yeah. And then I end up throwing it away. So actually I used to make this like vegan lentil stew and I used to make like four or five portions easily. Um, so what I would do is straight away, I would like portion up one or two in the freezer. And then it was an easy meal when I couldn't be bothered to cook. And then I was like, okay, yeah. I don't need to get a takeaway. I've got this in the freezer. Yes, it's already portioned amazing. up. Just warm it up. Um, yeah. So yeah. And I think um, I I quite like using leftovers for lunches. Mm. Um, and, and I think this is something that we maybe don't do out of convenience. But actually, if you just, you know, like, if I do a roast, for example, I love having some leftover and just, you know, like putting it in and then having a whole roast dinner at work on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> just like you just feel like you're winning like you're just winning um so yeah I, I love that and also even there's no harm in using things like leftovers for kids pack lunches um you know like there's all sorts of other things you can do um you know like a, whole, a roast chicken like the amount that you can do with a roast chicken we used to have um we used to plan a, a whole roast chicken over like three or four meals so yeah. we'd have like a, a roast you know, for the first time, we sort of slice it up or shred it. Normally, it goes a bit further that way. Um, and then we do like, um, I do some like fried rice or something like that, and then just put any like, leftover bits into the fried rice to sort of send it up. I had like chicken fried rice, and then I'd like boil the, the you know, like the bones and everything to make a broth, and then we'd have it in a soup. And it's just like you can get so much out of it. <laughs> and all you just needed was you know a bit of rice and a bit of veggies, mm. and you you know just had like three whole meals. So. It's, it's amazing what you can do when you think about it. Um, oh, I'm trying to look at what else we've got on this food list. Um, so I'm just going to whiz through what's left just so that, um, you know, if anybody's like, tell me more, tell me more, I need a bit more <laughs> like for, uh, food ideas, um, they're not going to go with that. So we've already mentioned meal planning. Um, I want to extend that to saying do a a two or a four week meal plan, particularly if you're, you know, you're somebody who lives on their own or you're this, you know, maybe two of you in the house um because actually you know, you buy a packet of rice that's not gonna you you know that's gonna last multiple meals so plan it across that and go like okay well a kilo of rice will last me this many meals um and plan that out we've already mentioned freeze your leftovers we're talking about cooking from scratch so you know making your own pasta sauces and um, you, know, you can get like a carton of passata or you know like chopped tomatoes um all of those sorts of things um shop from a list so don't just go out when you're hungry because <laughs> we all know that's a problem um you, if you've got a garden or you've got an outdoor space you could try and grow on your own this is great for things like herbs um and if you've got kids you can get them involved in this um, i think for like a quid you can get like a packet of seeds and i like i cut the bottoms off of like milk cartons a little bit of compost in there it's perfect the other thing is as well though like I've never tried this um mm. but I you know I keep seeing it on TikTok and when you know I'm going through my house build and stuff at the moment mm. but when it's already I'm super excited to have like a vegetable mm. garden and actually quite often um if you look up the method you can just from your fruit and veg like reharvest the seeds and regrow them yes, um, so like yeah. lettuce you can regrow from the head and mm -hmm. you know the way they go like oh with strawberries you like pick this out and dry it and then 
put it on a kitchen towel like you know look up the method yes. because it's not often as simple but things as like peppers like uh, you know red peppers and things like that they have the seeds all in there you could literally put them on a bit of kitchen roll a damp kitchen roll and they'll start sprouting in the sunlight and um, i did it with spring onions so if you take um the bottom of a spring onion and you put it in a jar of water you'll have a full spring onion within like a day or two and this is like it blows my mind like why am I buying more spring onions do you know what um we do as well um we use actual onions um mm. and then when they're sort of like well oh, not really great to eat anymore and they start sprouting at the top yeah, yeah. I used to throw them away but turns out if you just put them in water you get spring onions like at the top amazing I love that <laughs> so yeah try growing your own honestly it's um there's there's so many great ideas out there I've got I think I've got a blog post on this on my website about you know like things uh food you can grow from your fridge and it like talks about like just the different things you've already got that you can you can grow again oh you should link all these in the um oh I will it's gonna take me yeah. it's gonna take me hours <laughs> <laughs> it might be done by like 2024 um <laughs> I put here Pinterest for fakeaways so this is if you fancy a takeaway you can literally i used to have this great book and again i'll probably put a link at this to this somewhere and it was literally like how to make a like a, a hamburger that tastes like it's from mcdonald's like how to make nando's that tastes like it's from nando's but you don't need to buy that book you can go on pinterest now and it will literally tell you and they will taste the same so you, you know, know like, um we used to do uh my dad found a recipe i think on youtube actually mm. um for like sweet and sour sauce yes um yes. so we like we make it with tofu um mm. when we make it because we don't really eat meat um yeah but you can make it with chicken or tofu or whatever mm. and it's so good yes. and it's so simple it's something like just ketchup and like i don't know soy sauce vinegar i can't, I can't remember yeah, what the yeah. actual ingredients are don't quote me on this but definitely ketchup Mm. and I'm like who knew it had ketchup in it I don't know if the actual thing does but this tastes perfect I'm so. fairly sure we made something similar um and it had ketchup in it and it's like what <laughs> my family are really into Thai food at the moment um and I I was you know we're in that in-between bit between like Christmas and New Year and you know we're done with like um Christmas food <laughs> And it was like, we want something that's kind of healthy, but actually we still want treat food. Um, so I ended up making like satay chicken for dinner. You know, just like so good. And, you know, probably, I don't know, the whole thing probably came in at about, you know, like six, seven quid, which is significantly less than the 60 or 70 it would have cost if we'd have ordered food. In. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I've also put in here, you know, batch cook. So if your oven's on, what else can you check in there that's why you know like from an energy consumption perspective what else can you cook um we talked about buying in bulk last time so it's another great thing and we've also put on this list and i think this is a good one is plan your snacks um so i often in an attempt to save money and be healthy think that i don't want snacks um and i always do and it is then when i'm like oh i'm just nipping down to tesco and i'm getting a chocolate bar that i come back with like six other things that I didn't need so exactly like the accept the snacks <laughs> like embrace them and put them in with your weekly shop because they will end up costing you less um yeah. so yeah you know like and then you can plan like slightly healthier ones like don't overestimate <laughs> you're like <Yeah. laughs> um so yeah so that's that's a good one I'm always um, like I will have an apple and then I get yeah. the craving for sugar I don't want an apple it's like no I want cake <laughs> Um, right, so I think we should move on from food. Um, I, you know, like I say, I've got loads of stuff about this. So I think I've got a couple of videos on, you know, food and stuff anyway. Um, so the next one I wanted to talk about was just this idea of being um, you know, resourceful, this resourcefulness. Um, and a lot of this is about, you know, taking stuff you've already got and, um, I don't know, just being a little bit creative um, and resourceful with it. So any suggestions on under this heading here, Anna? Um, I think for me, the only thing I would say is for things like pet toys. Oh, this That's is a good one. So I don't have pets. So yeah, can't, can't I just sort of thought about it now because I'm not very creative at all. Mm -hmm. uh, like being an accountant, no creativity <laughs> here. Um, but I've learned through life experience mm -hmm. um, that there's no point in wasting money on expensive toys mm -hmm. for your pets if you don't have the resources. Because my cats, for example. Uh, are far happier with the cardboard box that or the a piece bed of came string. in than, <laughs> than 
they are anything else. And you can find so many videos online of like things you can do, for example, reusing uh, like the bits from inside toilet roll, for example, those yeah. like little rolls. Um, I saw something recently that was like reusing the cardboard thing from wrapping paper and putting treats yes. inside and like the cats just go crazy and things like that. <laughs> and, you know, just silly things like that um, instead of wasting money on mm. beds and toys and things like that. So that's my only contribution to resourcefulness. Yeah. I think. <laughs> the thing is, I think this is um, as as people that think about money, a lot we're probably much better at this than we think we are um but it's um I struggle um when, when I talk about frugal living or people ask me for like money saving ideas to think of things on the spot because I'm it's such a in, so ingrained in my like my being now just I just think everybody does it. yeah. <laughs> it's like what do you mean am I be born there in this I'm like oh my goodness um so some of the ones that I have is um you know things like glass jars you know everything you go, you go like into a restaurant now and they serve you, you have a milkshake or something in like a, a jam jar, you know, and it's like, you know, what is this? Um, and actually it's quite quirky and we're all like, oh, it's, so, it's so chic in there, you know, it's lovely. And um, you can do that at home, just take your jam jars and just use them for, you know, <laughs> cocktails and whatever you like. Milkshakes, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, honestly, you can do that at home, that's free. Um, we, we've we been using um, some like jam jars and stuff as things like, um, so my kids are really into art at the moment and so they've got like felt tip pens and whiteboard markers and all of this so we've just literally just been keeping the jars and you can tie a bit of ribbon around them they've got like stickers coming out of their ears so would they just put stickers on them and that works and we've got like you know, I haven't had to pay out for you know organization or anything like that um nice. also just you know organizing um you know your cupboards you know like spices if you're growing your own herbs or whatever you can use that for storing them when you're done um same with things like cardboard boxes um True. i did the whole uh conmari tidy in your house thing and she talks about oh, shoe boxes um you know for your knickers and stuff like this um so you know like that's another way of being resourceful True. Um, I just thought of something as well um, that might have fallen slightly under mm. food, uh, mm. but can fall under here. Yeah. Um, and actually, uh, this is such a done thing um, mm -hmm. in Poland, yeah. uh, but I don't think it's done much in the UK, mm -hmm. which is sort of creating your own preserves and food. Um, yes. So actually, you know, at the end of summer, during summer, um, when it's the season for like fruits and you know all sorts of things like that oh my god the amount of like jams and preserves yeah. <laughs> and um, things that people make so pickles like pickled cucumbers obviously mm. massive thing in Poland uh, pickled sauerkraut uh, beetroot yeah. uh, like cooked beetroot uh, for salads um, things like that and then yeah like I think it happens so a lot jars. in Norfolk as well amongst mm. like people that grew up here. <laughs> much me like I live in Norfolk now um but I, I grew up in Kent which is a little bit more uh urban I suppose <laughs> um but yeah like I used to get you know chutneys as like Christmas presents mm. I was like this is this is amazing but what on earth made you think to make a chutney but um you know it's a great way of using up um yeah. you know things like uh I don't know apple purees and things like that we've got quite a lot of apples and stuff around hmm. it or just make but also <laughs> it's far <laughs> cheaper to make like mm. a jam for example far yeah. healthier because you know what's in it there's mm -hmm. no preserves you just put as far as I know I think it's just um basically fruit and sugar yeah uh, and sometimes like a yeah. jam mix or something mm. um and you're buying the fruit when it's in season yeah that's the, that's the trick isn't it and yeah. you can freeze it as well if you just want it for porridge and things like that yeah um so yeah so I love that. I I don't know if I trust myself to make jam, but <laughs> there are plenty of people like, you know, like country people around me that do that. So I'm like, I'm cool with that. <laughs> and the other things I had under resourcefulness was just things like gift bags, you know, like, oh my gosh, I don't even write on the label anymore because I feel like the gift bag is a gift in itself <laughs> it's like you can use this one this is a free bag now um and also you know turn like turn in old like do not throw away your christmas cards just cut the bit that says 
to you love someone you know and and then just keep that bit and you can use them for you know sticking on next year's christmas presents or whatnot and um, you can do it with yeah. birthday cards and stuff as well so oh, you know just, what to, um oh, you're so inspiring um <laughs> <laughs> i just remembered recently um it's really random but it might help mm -hmm. someone um i was talking to someone uh who has a very a sort of retro type house like very yeah. olden feel which is kind of what I want to go for yeah and she's got a lot of these like retro type like plaques I don't know if you'd call them that yeah 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 boards. I know what you mean yeah and we were talking about it and as we were talking about it uh she was saying like oh I've only got these because they're quite expensive to buy mm. and then she remembered she had a calendar that mm. she bought for like really cheap um mm. and for each calendar like for each month they had like a retro picture and she'd yes. saved the calendar because the pictures were so cool. Mm. And then she was like, oh my God, I can frame these. Like, <laughs> you know, the and it's free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, out of the box thinking, mm. basically, of like, how can you get things cheaper um, that you'd normally pay a lot for? So here's, a, here's another one. Um, we have, I put up a picture frame. And I think it had like a picture from, you know, when my husband and I got married and it was like, oh, we just, that feels so long ago now. <laughs> we don't look anything like that. You know, it's a nice day, but. Uh. Um, and so, uh, you yeah, know, to the picture frame and um, I think I went on like Canva or something. I was just like searched on Pinterest and, and you know, got like a nice quote printed that out stuck in the frame looks quality but now I change it with the season so it sits in in our sort of you know entrance way um so we had like a, a cool Halloween one during Halloween and now we've got like a Christmas one um and they're kind of like yeah it just works great nice. for just changing out but I think the frames only cost like a quid or something from Ikea um so you know it's just a great way of sort of changing your your your, your decor um, um around around the seasons um at a, a low cost so yes Right, next one. I am going to go talk about shopping smarter. Um, and kind of like what I was thinking here was how, I mean, we're both quite good at this, um, I think. Um, I know I am. <laughs> um, but using things like tech um, and, you know, the, thing, the different resources that are online to actually reduce the cost of, you know, either, either like groceries or just general shopping. So have you got anything to add to this one, Anna? Um, so for me, um, I think that uh, I um, I used this extension called Honey. Um, love this because I haven't used this. So I'm keen to hear what you say. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. I was really skeptical because I'm very wary of downloading anything. Like, yeah. You know, completely, completely like mm. anyone says like download this. I'm like, oh, but. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, but honestly hands down honey is amazing um i have saved quite a bit of money um mm. it doesn't always work obviously because all yeah. it does is it tries out like different discount codes okay, so yeah. i sort of liken it to uh, I remember with like one of my first boyfriends, whenever we used to get like Domino's or something, we used to search yeah. on Google like current yes. like yeah, 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 Domino's yeah, yeah, yeah. and just went just through and tried it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this automates that. So basically every time I go to a checkout, um, mm. I have this little thing in the top right corner that says like try discount codes through Honey. And then I click it and then it goes through mm. all the ones it has. And then sometimes like you can see it going like, this one you have to do this this one doesn't work this one doesn't work and then even if it works it keeps going and it so sees which one, one. <sighs> yeah okay. and I could you not on like look fantastic and like all yes. these places I have saved like sometimes like 20 quid on one order um just that's that. totally I, worth it isn't it yeah and you don't pay for it I don't think I've never paid for it um so it's completely free um How so yeah I definitely money? recommend that <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's a takeaway for me right there um so yeah i was gonna say things like um i think most people watching this will know about cashback apps um but look you know like the, there's some out there that i think i think we know about the big the big two so you've got the likes of um quidco top cashback um and then um you've also got some smaller ones like um there's one called my money pocket you've got uh, kids start which allows you to take the savings like the, the the cash back you get and put it into your kids bank account um so you know it's not necessarily saving for you but better than mm. better than nothing um and it's worth kind of having a little look around um 
and seeing because some of the places that you're shopping at might not be you know you that they might not be on one website or you might get a better deal on a different one so you know it's worth looking around and um you know Quidco has got like a a browser extension so a bit like uh, honey where you can it will tell you like literally I've got it on my laptop and when I go on a website it goes you can get five percent cashback on this just like click here and you're like awesome <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that about Quidco because yeah. I'm really bad at remembering to go through like Quidco or yes. Top Cashback. But if I had an extension that reminded me that. <laughs> it literally tells you. And you're like, click the thing. It'll do a bit of a refresh. It'll take you back to where you are and you get the cashback. Like, honestly, it's so lazy. I love it. Um, nice. So other things. So, yeah, cashback. Um, Shopmium. I love Shopmium. I don't know if you. I've never use heard this of it. One. No, what is it? Um, so it's an app. I'm just looking at my phone now because whenever I start talking about these things, I'm like, I need to need to really like look at it and talk about it. Um, so basically, they give you discounts on um, like products. Yeah. So I'll give some examples. So you can go. You can look at like Tesco, Sainsbury's, ASDA, whatever. Um, and then it will say like here. So there's a Yield Valley organic dips. There's like a sour cream and chive dip and you can try it for 50p rather than one pound 65. Nice. and what you do is you just buy it like normal keep the receipt you upload the receipt into the app scan the you know the barcodes of the things that you've bought and it then gives you the money via paypal and normally i find that whole process only takes about two days at tops amazing so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool and there were some others like that so i think there's another one i've got like a whole fo folder that i've labeled on my phone that's called i am money smart that's the name of the folder um, <laughs> um, um so you've got like green gin i mean similar um uh, oh, there's another one i cannot remember the name of it but yeah there's that nice. um so we have a comment uh, mm, oh, i don't know if you can see it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, about honey actually love it you asked a question uh yeah. how it makes money yes apparently honey makes money by charging commissions oh so it's it's like an affiliate thing so they you can you press use... something to show the comment on uh... yeah there we go perfect <laughs> I just love the software. <laughs> yeah, um, I fell so, in love. Yeah. The first time I used this, I was like, oh my God, I need to this use this This is worth <laughs> whatever money I paid to get it, 100%. Um, so yeah, they charge commissions from the merchants themselves. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't cost yeah. you anything. They're making no. money. There's nothing deceitful or anything about it. Um, yeah, no, so, I've used it for, absolutely. I think, like, two years probably now. Um, yeah. And I love it. Absolutely love it love it love it thank you so much for that insight there that that's cool and um, so other things i've got like are things like price comparison sites um so you can do this on my google shopping uh you know look at the prices um another one is like uh, uh ide idealo anyway i've used that one before it's another <laughs> good one and i was like how do, how do they actually say it <laughs> um and, and that will look for, around for the best prices across different you know, websites um nice. and then what else have i got here? i've got sign up for loyalty schemes um but yeah. don't be loyal <laughs> <laughs> it's that's true. the tip it's yeah true. so you know, like get the benefits but some but are better than around. others um definitely but i have like all of them um and i think Sainsbury's is the one I use the most and yeah. actually with that um, and I think we've got sort of using credit cards and stuff um, mm. and paying them off monthly as well um, as one of the tips but actually I use Amex and I use the Nectar one because Ooh. it's the cheapest one um, it's £25 per year mm -hmm. uh, to sign up to it and obviously it depends on how much you spend so um, I spend quite I just I try to buy everything on Amex anything and everything I can mm. goes through my Amex and then I've got a direct debit set up, yeah. pays it off every month. But actually, you know, I make way more than that, way more than that 25 pounds I've spent back mm. in Sainsbury's points wow. that I can then spend in Sainsbury's and save on my food shopping. Yeah. Um, so 
anything like that. Um, and then I've got my Nectar card as well, so I always use that. Um, and I think, when was it? I was uh, in the summer, I think it was, because it was before my birthday. And I remember I went into like a really big Sainsbury's because uh, the local Sainsbury's. Obviously That's a whole day out right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, but I remember like it was before my birthday and I went and there was like jewellery and stuff. And I was like, mm. oh, I can buy this. And like I had yeah. enough points to pay for all of it through my points. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you can boost your loyalties somehow through credit cards and stuff, definitely. Yeah. So I didn't. I, I have an Amex card. I have the, 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 the I don't have it linked to Nectar or anything, but I have a, it gives you like 1% cashback or something like that. Yeah. Honestly, the amount I spend on it, I get, I've had at least 200 pound back every year, which tells you I'm spending a whole load of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, that's like- You can link people. So like if you have a partner, yes. you can link them to the account. So it's not like yeah. you're- because I know there's free Amex cards as well. Um, but yeah. even if you are paying for, say, the Nectar one or whichever one you decide is good for your mm. spending habits, um, you don't have to have two separate accounts that you pay for. You have one account, two cards. Yeah. Um, so this is what my husband does. He has he's a he's a card holder on my account. So all of our spending goes through that. Comes out the joint accounts. Like it's great. Um, but I I. I have like a, my mobile phone and now it's with Tesco mobile. So I get club card points for uh, my mobile phone. And it was a good deal anyway. Um, I'm also getting, I also try and fill up you know, petrol stations linked to supermarkets. You don't get the same conversion rate, but like, you know, Tesco, I think it's like one club card point for every two pence or something like that. So you still, you're still getting points and things there. Um <laughs> but, uh, so, <laughs> this is not sponsored <laughs> this is not a paid for thing um but you know yeah absolutely absolutely use those i think another great example i just want to mention here about loyalty cards um so i mean i'll talk about this like a broken record but three years ago we went traveling and in order to go traveling, there was me, my husband, and our two kids. We needed a whole buttload of vaccinations. And we did those vaccinations at Boots. And they cost thousands, like two grand, I think we spent on like vaccinations, which is more money than most people ever spend at Boots, I'm sure. Like just, it was loads. Um, and we got loads of, I'll use my card, like my Boots card. And we had so many points and it like basically paid for like all of the like sun cream we took and all the like um, nice. you know, mosquito repellent. Uh, you know, obviously we bought loads of like, uh, you know, paracetamol and, you know, like you know, medications and Boots stuff. This is a really us. good one. Uh, the loyalty. Yeah. Isn't it? But I mean, the, the prob problem I have with Boots is that they're quite expensive. They're not the cheapest place to buy those sorts of things um so i don't go in there to spend that often but this was a great example so if you ever do need um you know any like vaccinations for travel or stuff like that that's a good you know good tip good tip right there um okay so i'm going to move on to like a massive category now <laughs> energy consumption how can you be frugal how can you save money with your energy consumption um so I have a video <laughs> and it's also a blog post on my website as well. And it's a hundred ways that you can save um, on energy consumption. But Anna, I'm going to let you come in with some of your favorites first. Okay. Uh, so for me, uh, there's, uh, I'm going to start with like the weirdest, weirdest one. Um, Good. We want, we want <laughs> people to have stuff that they can take away from this. Something new. Yeah. You don't, you know, don't want this to be you could watch a million like, of these videos of on youtube yeah <laughs> um so one of the things i think that um some people do and some people don't uh, but it's a little bit weird but if you live alone especially um or if you have multiple bathrooms um if you're going for a wee you don't always need to flush the toilet um so especially during the day if mm -hmm. you're keeping hydrated yeah. there is no need I'm sorry, but it's such a waste of water. <laughs> yeah. I started this when I was um, living by myself and I realized I was like, oh my God, I am using like liters and liters of water to mm. basically flush water. Yes. Um, and to be honest, it wasn't even a money saving thing. It was mm. just a 
let's try and save the planet <laughs> like, yeah. just a little bit. <laughs> if I can do one thing that's so like <laughs> easy, yeah. Um, and actually it's quite, um, I think quite helpful in terms of mm -hmm. water bills. Um, and then sort of linked to that, um, this isn't something that I've done, but I know sort of uh, someone who does it, uh, an old, older lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically you get a plastic bowl and you mm -hmm. put it under your tap in the sink. Mm -hmm. And when you wash your hands, you let that water go in the bowl instead of down the sink. Mm -hmm. And then you use that to flush the toilet. <gasps> That's genius. <laughs> That's straight up genius. Yeah. yeah. So we have we do have a similar bowl in our house. Um, and it's, it's mostly because my kids like to use going to the toilet as always like <laughs> procrastinating or going to sleep um and honestly i don't care if they get up 200 times during the night but i do not want them flushing that toilet and waking me up like i'm done with that so um i just said look and this is a poo <laughs> like yeah leave it because there's probably only three drips coming out anyway <laughs> so like, you're not drinking that much um so yeah so we're like i'm quite happy to just leave that um I'm totally with you on that one. Um, right. So others. So with that, I mean, there's obviously there's, there's some there's some tips here like turn down the thermostat. Okay, you know, like we've had we've had Martin Lewis been ranting about that one. Um, Marino. Yes. Oh my god! I, like I am so happy I invested mm. in this. Um, I bought a second one because I wear it so much. Love um, this. But it's so good. It's so thin. Mm. that you don't even feel like you're wearing it and mm. oh my god I didn't wear it once and I was so cold <laughs> um, at which point I decided I needed another one because this yeah. was in the wash um so mm. yeah thermostat down layers up yeah yeah percent. absolutely and merino wool they often have merino wool things in in like Lidl oh, um so you know you can um because my husband likes merino wool because he cycles mm. And, and it's good for like moisture you don't i don't know something about sweat whatever but um but it's good at like regulating temperature so he they quite often do like merino wool like shirts and you know mm. whatever so look out look out for those um i also heard actually um never tried this by the way mm. so pinch of salt but apparently it's it's a good mm. tip because merino wool works both ways mm. so actually in the summer they said uh, when you're really hot mm. uh, in your bed, basically put on merino wool. Uh, it feels like so counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? But they're like, actually, it keeps your body cool. And the other day, um, I sort of got up, I went for a walk with the dog. And then I was still so tired when I got back. Mm. I lay down in bed and I fell back asleep. Mm. And I had this on, and oh my God, I was so cold yeah so cold and I was like oh I wonder if this is part of like what they were saying about it yeah. keeping the <laughs> yeah. warm out um yeah. so definitely yeah. want to, to check out in the summer they're an, they're an all year round like mm. item of clothing mm. and you know I think one of the things that is worth mentioning here you know we're talking about frugal living frugal living is not about not spending money it's about spending money that is going to it did not mean you have to spend it again in the future <laughs> you know like um so you know one of the things i had on my master list of you know frugal living tips was about buying quality like buying the yeah. right things rather than um you know buying cheap things it's, there's a very you know there's, there's a clear difference between being frugal and being cheap and being cheap is yeah. always buying the lowest price stuff whereas being frugal might be about spending some money in the first instance um and then actually reaping the benefits later on and i think marina was a great example of that i remember reading a quote from a book and i can't tell you what book it was now but it was something that said like this is why sort of uh come oh, i'm going to completely botch this but it was something <laughs> around uh this is why the rich get richer and the poor never yeah, get them. Yeah, yeah something around those things and it was this story around shoes and it was like oh, it was just this... the 10 pound boots versus the 80 pound boots or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it was mm -hmm. like you know this guy buys 80 pound boots and they last mm -hmm. him 
so so long yeah. this guy can only afford 10 pound boots mm. and actually the next year he has to buy another pair and the next yeah. year he has to buy another pair yeah. and over time he ends up spending far more than the 80 yes. pounds um this was more to illustrate okay he can't afford to buy yeah. those more expensive ones you know fair enough yeah um but actually if you can if you can save up if you can afford to just spend a little mm. bit more for something more quality yeah uh, often it pays off in the long term yeah and I think if you're in like the, the really fortunate position where maybe you've got some money from you know family for Christmas or something actually think of how you could use that money you know in a, as, as a, I say as an investment but I don't mean that in the, you know, the sense that we're normally talking about investment but can you use it to buy you know upgrade some stuff and make it last you a bit longer um so and just just think about things there um so other things i've got on my list i've got uh turn off lights you know install a smart meter and still double glazing so again these are like investment things and these are huge amounts of money um like some low cost things to reduce your energy consumption and therefore save money things like see like um get like draft excluders and you know like mm. go look for the gaps and put things down it can be as simple as like a rolled up blanket underneath a door um and even just shutting doors um so we have a our front door comes into our house and then there is uh, it's like a little you know porch hallway thing and then we've got another door that goes into our living room the difference between when we shut that door and when it is open is significant so you know just do those things um also talking mm. of drafts um check your windows because um there are some windows mm. they have these good? little things in the mm. inside uh that you switch between like mm. summer and winter um and actually we learned this recently and oh my god it makes such a difference um there is wow. just no draft coming through just yeah. through flicking the switch on the inside um of the window uh, I did not know that there was an inside switch. I don't know if it's in every window. Mm, yeah. Um, but worth That's checking. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, we didn't know uh, for a few years that it was there. And then someone mentioned it and we checked. It was like, oh, okay, flip this. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's no drop coming from this window now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Worth um, checking. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I love that. That's another takeaway for me. I've got, like, honey and look for the wi <laughs> window switch. Um and so there's things like use a heated clothes area. So this is quite like a this is a sort of a, I feel like a, a viral you know tip that went around. And there were people that were using heated. So there's like a clothes source that is you know, electric. You plug it in, mm. generates a sort of a small amount of heat. Um, but people were also doing things like if you then put like um, like a bed sheet over the top that contained the heat more uh, and things were drying a little bit quicker um so you know there's all sorts of things you can do with that um I've recently brought an electric blanket I found one in the middle of little and um it's not like I can't keep the kids out of it they're just constantly coming in <laughs> um but I have been warm in things like my slippers and my um my pajamas <laughs> And stuff before I get in bed on there. um so yeah that's that's good times um like lids and saucepans um filling up a flask where if you boil too much water you know when you're making a cup of tea mm. have a flask sat next to it and just pour that water into a flask and then you can use that for your cup of tea next time or your coffee whatever floats your boat um oh curtains like clothes curtains they're such a great way of controlling the temperature in your in your mm. house you know like in the summer they will keep the sun out and keep the room cool and then in the winter they keep the room warm so definitely Definitely. worth doing um things like just keeping your appliances well maintained um so this means cleaning behind your fridge uh you know, cleaning in your radiators um you know giving you like my dad seems to always be cleaning the dishwasher when i see him um like i go like go around and, and i'll be like oh what are you doing he's well, just giving the dishwasher it's like ten thousand mile service um, but actually that means his appliances last and they run efficiently and um, it's the same with your washing machine uh you know if you've got a tumble dryer clean the vent because otherwise that's just going to be you know using way more energy than you need to honestly i could go on and on um one other thing um, mm. that I again learned quite maybe not as recent as some of the other stuff uh, but recently-ish mm. in my life yeah. 
uh, was that actually it makes a difference to your fridge and how much energy it uses, how much stuff is in it. Mm. And actually, it's the other way around to what people think. An empty mm. fridge costs more to run yes. than a full fridge. Yeah. Uh, and same with a freezer, of course, because yeah. actually uh, the food cools itself in a way. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's the yeah. same when you go shopping and you're meant to put all your frozen items together because yeah. the cool air from they've one... retained the temperature yeah yeah um, so yeah i didn't know that so that might no. uh, help someone too yeah yeah if you can fill it up fill it up i don't know use ice packs or something if you haven't mm. got food you know like chuck that in um right like i say i could have chatted about that for <laughs> ages um i'm trying to think of some um which topics i want to go and i'm gonna go for i oh, did i put this in here Oh, right. Okay. I want, I'm going to add a new banner that's called Too Far. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the toilet one could have gone in here. <laughs> yeah. um, this, this concept of extreme frugal living. And I don't know if you've been like following me for a while, you'll know that I'm not ashamed to like go there on this stuff. Um, I'm not saying that I have stuck with some of these ideas but um <laughs> yeah like are there any frugal living steps that you think uh like verge on being too far um I think probably the one I mentioned before yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> we just chat about that like it's normal so that's fine <laughs> yeah um but actually I don't think so I think um quite a lot of them are quite acceptable things um I guess in my mind because I am what did I do here um because I am <laughs> quite uh on that wavelength so yeah. I guess to me um you know something like um going for oh, there's this movement I've always wanted to try this uh, mm. but I just feel like my hair is not suitable um but like the no shampoo thing yeah um, the no poo method as no they poo call it. <laughs> <laughs> um all stuff like that. Um, mm. I think some people might label it too. I've far. done that. Have you? Yeah. Was it, was, did it work? Was it quite? It was all right, but I had young kids at the time, and it was just it was too much going on. But my hair was great. So this is this is where you either don't use shampoo and conditioner, or you look for alternatives to shampoo and conditioner. A lot of this depends on the water type you have. Um, so I live in a, like a hard water area, uh, and that can make it more challenging and I swim a lot. So, you know, you're constantly worrying about like chlorine mm. and things in my hair. Um, but you basically, you can then swap up, you can wash your hair. So the, the most common one is to wash your hair with uh, bicarbonate of soda. So that cleans your hair. Uh, and then you, you rinse and then you use like some sort of vinegary sort of, you know, mildly acidic, um, solution to condition your hair and actually if you're not sure that this is actually going to work I dare you to put <laughs> a little bit of um, like apple cider vinegar or something like that in your conditioner and then enjoy the benefits of how silky smooth your hair is <laughs> like <laughs> the next time because it's amazing it's it, it works so well try that. So, yeah, yeah it kind just of a little bit just mix it like... in how smelly it is I'm like oh my god is Honestly. my hair gonna smell like vinegar no um, it doesn't it really doesn't I, I don't know why it doesn't maybe your hair just like absorbs it I, don't know. I feel um, I feel like you should put the comment up at the moment because it's yeah. a very good tip <laughs> yeah uh, no shampoo is really easy if you go bald there's there's the too far would you go bald <laughs> to save money <laughs> love that thank you very much <laughs> um, I have I have previously thought about like extreme fundraising or something and being mm. like oh I'll shave my head no yeah. I, just, I can't I just can't like I admire people who can do that mm. um or well I admire more I guess females who can do that because uh it's still such a big sort of beauty standard and it yeah. still makes such a difference uh, you know I yeah. remember looking at um penny from how i met your mother yes. and with her hair like how different she looks when she has yeah. long hair and short hair and i'm like yeah there's just no way <laughs> no. No, but no. i am very jealous uh of people who have no hair <laughs> yes but i mean there is a takeaway from this and that takeaway is um 
doesn't necessarily have to be the hair on your head <laughs> you know like i i did uh and this was a bit of an investment um but not as much of an, an, an investment as you probably think but i did the whole like laser hair removal thing mm. um mostly mostly on the the, the tash and the beard um <laughs> but that was like i was costing me loads of money and like waxing and whatnot you know like eyebrows and stuff. even razors like razors yeah. are so expensive yeah um, and, I've you know, I'm even... done. and now I don't even really need to do that and that was only nine quid a session and you know no. you only need a few so you know it was again it was an example of I don't, more frugal living but I needed that money so I used some of my Christmas money last this time last year to get that done um and now I don't have to shave my armpits anymore so yeah and it There's lasts no... quite a bit of time because like mm -hmm. I had it done years ago yeah. and whilst it's still sort of um growing back now mm. after such a long time it is nowhere near um, no. how it was so actually like yes just get a couple of extra sessions yeah, yeah yeah I will <laughs> but like you know at the moment I'm building a house I'm like oh priorities yeah. don't need yeah. it um yeah. especially in the winter and it's like, winter you know. and nobody's seeing that <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it does like even if you never then get a top up you will yeah. still see reduced yeah. sort of need for shaving yeah. so yeah um probably well just stop shaving up. that'll save you loads of money like True. <laughs> <laughs> stop caring what people think and do what you like um so some other things that i've got here are things like um menstrual products we haven't talked about reusables but there's a whole thing there um so I like switched to a, like a menstrual cup years ago now um and you know like um like period pants and this mm. sort of thing and basically haven't had to buy anything else since it's been a huge yeah. saving for me um kitchen roll we switched to just having like um like reusable wipes so you know somebody spills something but chuck it in the washing machine with all the other stuff again so common it seems yes. i think in rural poland um mm. from what i see like very rarely kitchen towels um yeah. quite often like the reusable like cloth towels that you then just yeah. pop in the wash yeah yeah and it's just it's just mm. so so simple when you think about it and here's can, something yeah. that might be too far that i've just oh, i love on. it let's um, end on this whatever this is <laughs> let me see if it's on the, if it's on your list uh it is not um so um no it's not um kids nappies reusable yes. nappies yeah yeah so um, i did this i did this with my kids i did the whole reusable nappy thing oh it's gross and when you're in the trenches it feels horrendous <laughs> Um, but actually, it was a huge money saver. And often people think that it is um, it is quite costly because you need a huge initial cost. But the thing is, there are so many people out there that have bought them with the intention of using them and then don't, and then are looking to sell them on secondhand. Or they'll be used like once or twice or whatever. Mm. You can pick them up at like the tiniest fraction of the amount that they sell for um so 100 like look into those things yeah right and i'm gonna wrap it up we've been chatting for ages it has been great um i will i'm, I'm slightly nervous i've got to do the whole like uploading video thing after this uh, I, might just, like, I think on streamyard husband. the good thing is it does once you just click publish i think it will automatically do it but sometimes you have to wait for it to process and things but you know what? I think I might just click the buttons um, <laughs> then, and then like go and have a mince pie or something and then just <laughs> see if it's worked after all of this. But thank you so much to the people that joined us. Thank you so much to you, Anna. It's been fabulous to come back and do a part two of this. If you missed part one, do go check that out because that's over on Anna's channel. Um, do you want to just let people know where they can find you, Anna? Uh, yeah, so I'm over at uh, Panda Boss Anna, basically. Uh, so if you in the search bar search Panda Boss uh, Anna, you will find me. Um, and yeah, I talk about saving money and investing and things like that. Um, so I, I will be there. Yeah. Um, and thank you so much for having me and for coming onto my channel again. Uh, and thank you to everyone Pleasure. who's stuck with us all this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because obviously there, there have been people. So thank you. We really do appreciate it. 
there's so much useful stuff across mm. the two videos so yeah you missed that go back and watch it um but yeah thank you so much we will have to do this again we'll maybe uh let ourselves recover and you know just <laughs> go back to wearing yeah. our pajamas for the next few days <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, thank you so much and thanks to everyone who's watching and see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.